must forgive his lady for this gauche breach of etiquette. It's all right. The peasant, whose name is Alm, will get over it. Oh, Alm, I can see you are truly kind. Might I ask you more about your village later? I'm ever so curious. Of course. Splendid! I've always wanted to know more about cows and pigs and such. Yes, they're... they're amazing creatures. It's amazing what the 3DS has done for the Fire Emblem series. What was once a niche strategy game has blossomed into one of Nintendo's premier franchises. Awakening really did save the series, and Fates, despite its mixed fan reception, continued that success. Now we have plenty of Fire Emblem titles to look forward to, but there's still one more game for the 3DS before the series moves to the Switch. Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia, a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden on the Famicom. And upon its reveal, I was incredibly excited for it. Half the series has never been released worldwide, so this was a chance to see what we had missed with some obvious updates to bring it in line with the modern idea of Fire Emblem. Despite that though, Shadows of Valentia might feel more unique now than even when it was first released. So many of the staples that we're familiar with are either gone or completely reworked, which brings into question whether new fans will even enjoy it. Shadows of Valentia's story features dual protagonists Alm and Celica, who became fast childhood friends until they were forced to be separated. Promising to one day reunite, the two grow up apart and shuddered away from the world at large. The land of Valentia is ruled over by two gods, Duma and Mila, who battled endlessly until a stalemate was reached and a tenuous peace accord was forged, represented by the respective nations of Regal and Zofia. However, Regal has broken that peace accord and invaded Zofia, causing Alm to leave his village in order to join the resistance forces, while Celica leaves at the same time to discover what has happened to Mila since Zofian land is beginning to rot. While there is a bit of a slow start, the story honestly kept me invested the entire time. It's a good setup and naturally allows you to experience both Alm and Celica's stories at the same time, which also serves to give it a unique feel. The plot itself and its twists and turns were pretty easy to see coming though. Nothing caught me off guard, but that really wasn't the focus in my opinion, especially since this is ostensibly an adaptation of an NES story. Instead, the true star here is the characters and their motivations. These are some of the strongest written characters in the series, with maybe the exception of Celica, who can come across a bit flat, if only because I've seen her personality so many times before. Alm gets close to that as well, but there's enough here to flesh him out that I stayed invested. It's the supporting cast that truly stands above though. Because of the split nature of the story and how certain gameplay elements are handled, this might be the first time I truly felt like I got to know the cast of a Fire Emblem game. So many times in the past, a cool character would show up and then basically have nothing to do other than support conversations to try and flesh them out. While Shadows of Valentia still has that, the changes to the formula provides many more opportunities to talk to them and learn their stories as they'll often appear to just talk about their background or just give their feelings about current events. Outside of a few characters here and there, I really feel like I got to know most of them. And like I said, it all ties into how Shadows of Valentia changes up the Fire Emblem formula. In the past, many of the games would have one major battle per chapter with options to manage your army in between. Fire Emblem Echoes features no chapters and instead focuses on acts where lots of battles can take place. An act doesn't end until all the battles in a section of the map are completed and later acts allow you to freely choose between Alm and Celica's armies, going in whatever order you see fit, which does help the variety since you're often able to work with different units. It's a bit similar to other Fire Emblem games with a map, except there's much more to do beyond that. You could move on to the next battle and continue the story, but opening up more of the map also grants access to towns and dungeons. Each town naturally contains villagers that provide more information on what's going on, as well as the occasional quest. These usually come in the form of providing certain items or completing a set task in a dungeon and reward you with items for battle. These items can also be found around towns or any place with the explore option, allowing you to keep them for your provisions. There's no vulneraries or healing potions of any kind this time around. Instead, it takes the form of food. Food becomes important in the dungeons. 
enemy units wander the depths and an encounter with them will cause a traditional battle to take place. Thankfully, these are usually pretty short and don't take up much time, but players can get the drop on these enemies with a well-timed swing to lower their health and place your units closer to theirs in order to dish out the hurt quickly. Of course, if they get the drop on you, then they're given the advantage and allowed to move first, which could spell trouble for your more vulnerable units. Where the food comes into play is in restoring your unit's stamina. The more a unit battles, the more fatigued they become, and if they become too tired, their stats will decrease. Food helps keep up their energy, though in my experience this didn't become something to really monitor until the final third of the game. Until that point, the dungeons tended to be small and contained, a nice way to break up the action. But later dungeons can be a grueling affair, with battles just wearing you down. Thankfully, the rewards are worth it, with new equipment and access to Mila's statue, which allows units who have reached a certain level to promote their class. It's an easy system to understand, and the game always informed me when it was time to promote. All of this makes Shadows of Valentia feel closer to a traditional RPG, but it's still very much a strategy game even though there's been many changes made there as well. Right off the bat, the traditional weapon triangle is gone. Swords aren't more effective against axes or weaker to lances. In fact, there are no axe wielders that join your party in the entire game. I wasn't sure how I would react to this change, but it never decreased the amount of strategy necessary to win the day. The same could be said of weapon degradation. At no point can any of your weapons break, causing some significant changes to how things play out. Instead of each character having a large inventory, they can only carry one item at a time. This can either be food to heal or equipment that you find along the way, which takes the form of classic items like iron, steel, or silver weapons and shields. The stronger the equipment, the bigger the boost to your character's strength or defense at the cost of less speed. And this applies to all units since there's no weight stat, so it becomes a question of how much speed you're willing to sacrifice for the extra power. But as you use the equipment, you'll also learn special arts that sacrifice HP for a stronger attack that may boost your power, accuracy, or even avoidance. It leaves a lot of room for how each player wants to customize their army. Arts are similar to how magic works in the game as well. Since there are no tomes, magic is exchanged for health. The stronger the magic, the more health that's drained. Fortunately, there are ways to keep your mages in good health, including rings that restore a little HP at the start of each turn. It felt like a great way to balance the power, but also the vulnerability of magic units. The other big change is with the archers, who are now able to hit units next to them as well as those from much farther away. However, they don't automatically have the ability to do extra damage to flying units, which helps balance things out. In all, I like a lot of these changes because it made me think of how to handle each battle in a different way. Without the weapon triangle and these different ideas in play, other aspects of the gameplay have a lot more focus. Terrain bonuses became a bigger deal, but also character classes and their individual stats. The attack stat applies to both magic and physical moves, and the difference only matters in terms of defense. I had to keep in mind which units could handle each situation, especially since the game loves to match mages with archers, making them difficult to approach. As much as I enjoyed these differences, it's not always perfect. While I love that normal battles could often have every unit in each fight, something that's limited to 10 in dungeons, the variety never really changes. Almost every win condition is routing the enemy, and while the enemies themselves are often varied, it can get a little old. The dungeons attempt to break this up, but each encounter there still features the same kind of battle. And while the early game is pretty easy, there's a significant difficulty increase about halfway through Act 3. Thankfully, the game mitigates this difficulty spike through the use of Mila's turn wheel. At any time during your turn, it can be activated in order to rewind time and fix any of your mistakes. You can go one move previously or even all the way back to the beginning of the battle. It was such a relief playing on classic mode and not having to worry about restarting every time I lost a unit. Instead, I could go back and try to fix the mistake even if this might take a few tries. And that's where it gets tricky since the turn wheel only has so many uses per battle in the overworld and the same amount of uses for an entire dungeon. It can be very easy to run low on uses with bad play. I find it to be an excellent compromise to those who don't want to use casual mode. 
and while the game does become harder, it's at its most annoying when there are canter enemies. Canters can summon monsters to fight your party nearly infinitely. The act drains their health, but they always have a way to immediately restore it. And it can be nightmarish at times trying to fight through these hordes just to reach the canter, who is often pretty tough on his own. It became a matter of slowly moving forward, mowing down the mobs, until I could rush the canter, kill him, and dispel all the summoned creatures remaining. So many battles are extended way longer than they should be simply because of these enemy types, and they're often there to ensure a much harder battle. While they occasionally could be fun to fight, I eventually ended up groaning every time they appeared. Still, there's a lot to enjoy about Shadows of Valentia. For one, every single interaction is fully voiced with the small exception of some villagers. It adds so much more personality to the characters, and all of them are incredibly handled. Some stand out more than others, such as Grey, May, Delthea, and Burkut, but this may be some of the best voice acting I've ever encountered in a video game. It all comes across so naturally that it's easy to get sucked into the world, and the music is just as good. There are so many standout tracks here that really push the epic scale of the story and the events that occur. It is brilliantly handled. It doesn't hurt either that this is the best looking Fire Emblem game on the 3DS. I love the updated art style for the characters, and the battle sequences are gorgeous. Each encounter reflects what's going on in the map, and has so many small touches like swords cutting through the nearby grass during swings. Beyond that though is the choreography of the battle animations. They often flow into each other so seamlessly that I was even entertained during missed attacks. It's not perfect though as some of the camera angles can be wonky, and the characters can sometimes just pop in. This never affected my enjoyment though because the animation was just so good. Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia is a really good remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden. Many of the ideas here originated in that Famicom title. It updates and refines, keeping what works and not finding some way to implement the newer ideas like pair-ups and child units. It's great to finally experience the game, and I ended up liking it a lot. Not everything works, and there's still annoyances to be found, but this is the new gold standard as far as Fire Emblem's presentation is concerned. It is well worth picking up for a lengthy and fun strategy adventure. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Fire Emblem and other things gaming.